thank you for the uh, for Professor Holzer's uh, introduction. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Xiang Hongmi from Indiana University. Uh, today I will present our work on uh, on what's the system platforms. So in recent years, what's the system devices are getting very popular, especially Amazon Echo devices and Google Home devices. Uh, using the devices, you can do a lot of different things, such as to play music, to control your smart home devices, um, or to send or receive money using PayPal. Actually, you can also even to access your medical information. So in our study, we aim to answer this question. Are they smart enough to be secure? And if, if the answer is yes, then this talk is over. Right? So our answer is not yet. So we will introduce you how those platforms work. And we will define security requirements that need to be certified. And we will also identify the security gaps that will lead to some attack scenarios, including what's squatting and also what's masquerading. We will then discuss the potential consequence, consequences of those attacks and also evaluate how feasible are those attacks. Lastly, we will present you our different solutions, including the scale response tracker and the user intention classifier. So how it works? From a high level, it works like a network rider. It captures users' what's command, decides the specific scale to handle. Once the response is available from the scale, it will be delivered reversely to the users. So as we all know, network writing system has been proved very efficient and reliable in the past tens of years. While there are some attacks such as BGP hatching, uh, BGP hijacking, um, mostly it's very reliable. So if you, you consider what's a system platform as a black box, it actually work, work in a similar manner. It captures the user's worst command and deliver it, forward it to the um, specific scale to handle. So basically, their, uh, their job is to release the source payload to the correct destination. So how can they achieve this goal? Usually, first, the destination should have its address. And the address should be unique. Also, the traffic should include the destination address as part of the payload. The, also, the writing system should be able to accurately retrieve the destination address from the traffic. And if there are some conflicts, there should be some strategy to resolve it. So is this the case for the web assistant platforms? Firstly, each scale actually have, will, will need to register an invocation name. Which can, which can be regarded as an address or identifier. However, Alex actually allows scales to have the same invocation names. While this is not allowed on Google's platform, scales can still have invocation names that share similar or even the same pronunciation, which will result in the same problem. Also, human uh, users are not uh, machines. They prefer to use diverse and natural language style uh, to invoke scales. Whether, whether their invocation manner can include uh, the, the invocation name accurately, it deserves further investigation. Also, as, uh, as we uh, studied, uh, AI systems were used to retrieve the invocation name from user's voice command. Specifically, the voice command will be converted from speech to text. Uh, then ALP te techniques will be used to, re to retrieve the invocation name. As we all know, AI systems are always complicated, and they can be error-prone. So this also deserves further uh, study to understand how well they can recognize the user's voice command very well. Lastly, we found that the longest prefix matching is also enforced uh, in voice assistant platforms. But the, the context is different from the network writing. Um, also, the address format is different. So this strategy actually caused some extra problems. In our study, we have, captured, we have identified two attack scenarios. One is worth guiding. And we found that the platforms may fail to understand the user's intention. 
and therefore invokes the wrong scales for users. The other is worth masquerading. And because scale switching and termination is not well supported, the attacker can actually masquerade itself as other scales or even the system. So what's the consequences of those attacks? For what's squatting, the number one is the compromise of user's data and device. Depending on different scale, the data or device can be different. It can be the bank account balance or your historical uh, transfer uh, records. It can also be the access to your home device. Also, the scale may, the attacker may be able to propagate fake or controversial information, still depending on different scale, such as uh, some fake news or some wrong, uh, wrong medical results. Besides, the attacker can actually direct users to some traditional but powerful phishing channels because they can send the user a notification uh, cards where they can uh, include some website and a customer service uh, phone number and ask users to visit those website and phone number. Therefore, they will direct users to some traditional phishing uh, channels. Besides, um, <clears throat> because users don't know they are communicating with the wrong scales, they may have a very bad experience, um, and they will go ahead to give a very bad review for the victim scale, which will definitely hurt the reputation of the victim scale. So what the consequences of what's masquerading? It will allow the attackers um, to masquerade itself as uh, other scales, the consequences should be, different, uh, should be the same as what's squatting. Also, it allows the attacker to masquerade, masquerade itself as the system, which allows the attacker to record the user's conversations and, all, uh, and also suggest uh, um, some other malicious scale to the users. So how realistic, how realistic are those attacks? To start, we study how users invoke scales to understand where users accurately um, include the invocation name in their uh, invocation was command. Besides, how well the platforms can understand, can recognize those was command. Based on the knowledge learned from the first two steps, we compose a set of attack scales and experiment whether they will get started instead of the victim scale. We also scan the whole scale market to see is there any real-world attack cases. To start, in our user study, we give users two invocation names and ask them which, which is their preferred uh, invocation manners. They may select the answers we provided with them. They may also uh, fill in their own answers with, with our open questions. Here table shows the top uh, invocation manners preferred by users. And we can see when invoking uh, skills, users tend to use very diverse and natural language uh, invocation manners. As, uh, as, uh, as aforementioned, longest prefix matching is enforced in those platforms. Um, considering users diverse and natural language invocation manners, it will create some attack space for web squatting, which has been proved in our uh, later uh, experiment. So we then study how well the system can understand the user's voice command. So we start to select one, uh, 100 invocation names for each platform. And uh, we then record the voice command through human subjects and uh, text-to-speech services. Um, we then play those recordings to the platforms. And our help scale will capture the recognition re results from the platform. As shown in this table, the recognition uh, error rate is actually very high. Um, while Google looks much better, but 10% uh, is still too high for, to create a bigger attack space. For example, Florida State Quiz will be recognized as Florida Snake Quiz. And the Rent Europe will be misrecognized as Red Europe. So, based on the knowledge learned from the last two steps, we compose our attack scales and exp 
experiment whether our attack scale were getting invoked instead of the, uh, uh, instead of the victim scale. So we compose scale from two channels. One is based on knowledge learned from the user, user study. We add some prefix or uh, suffixes to the invocation name. The other channel is through similar pronunciation as learned from the, uh, the previous, uh, study, uh, previous evaluation. Uh, we actually uh, compose some uh, scales, uh, compose some invocation names that have similar pronunciation as a victim scale. One thing to note, note we didn't publish our attack scale to the market. So in our, in our experiment, common users will not be affected. Here shows the results. So table shows how many attack scales get invoked instead of, uh, instead of the victim scale. While it's different from, from platforms, but basically our attack scales are very likely to get invoked instead of the victim scale, especially on, on the Alexa platform. So the next step is to identify real-world attack cases. So the general goal is to identify scales with computing invocation names. We define computing invocation names as, as names that uh, either have similar pronunciation or leverage the longest prefix matching strategy. So we first collect available scales from both market. Because for some, tech, for some technical difficulties, we didn't identify a lot of scales for, from Google, Google market. So we focus on our, uh, our study on the Alexa market. We then came up with a workflow to generate uh, computing invocation names uh, through which we can identify computing scales uh, on the market. Uh, here shows the workflow to generate those computing invocation names. For time limit, I will not go into details. Basically, as you can see, we first uh, um, uh, apply text paraphrasing for the given invocation name, and we then compare, convert the text uh, voice command into its pronunciation format. Uh, we then compare uh, the, the pronunciation similarity, which allowed to, us to generate the computing invocation, invocation names. Here shows the results. More than 19% of scales are computing with each other because they have the same pronunciation. If we lower the bar to some, to some level, such as similar pronunciation, the percent will be even higher. Also, 2.7% of scales have the same pronunciations but a different, smell, a different uh, spelling in their text form. And another 1.8% of scales actually leveraged the longest prefix matching uh, to compete with some victim scales. Here show some examples. Dog fact, dog fact is an invocation name of a very popular scale. And uh, here, here is actually another scale named the Mia Dog Fact. It actually competed with the dog fact, uh, dog fact scale. Also, there are other scales they registered the invocation name that are not relevant to their scale content or scale function, but simply to compete with some very popular scale, such as Scuba Driving, uh, Darwin and uh, Soccer Jake. Their, their function is not relevant to Space Jake, but they register Space Jake as an invocation name. Uh, but Space Jake is uh, also the invocation name of a very, very popular scale. So our previous uh, workflow to generate uh, computing invocation name can help us to mitigate the worst quieting attack. So here, um, in the difference part, we focus on uh, mitigate the worst, uh, worst masquerading uh, attack. Our defense includes two parts. One is user intention classifier. It will decide whether the user aims to conduct a context switching or simply want to continue the, uh, the current interaction. The other part is a scale response checker. It will um, decide whether, whether the given uh, uh, scale response is suspicious or not. Here shows the methodology of our user intention classifier. 
still for time limit, I will not go into details. Basically, we compare the given user's voice command to the context of the current scale to decide whether they are highly relevant. If not, we consider it the user one intends um, to do a context switching. Um, our scale response checker adopted a blacklist manner. And for each uh, scale response, we will compare it uh, to the items in the blacklist. If a high similarity is, ach is achieved, we uh, flagged this scale response as suspicious. So to summary, two, two attack scenarios were ad identified in our research, was squatting and was masquerading. Also, both attacks were found to be very practical and also dangerous, can causing a lot of different consequences. We also explored a set of mitigation solution, such as a, a computing invocation name generator, the user intention classifier, and also scale response checker. One thing to note is that both platforms have, have acknowledged our attack cases and also discussed the mitig uh, mitigation solutions through a, setting, uh, a set of meetings. Um, thank you. That's all. Okay, we have time for a few questions. And let me begin. Um, can you please uh, explain the attack uh, threat a bit more? So do I need to install a skill first? Or oh, yeah. Um, actually, uh, they are different from mobile apps. To invoke, uh, uh, invoke a skill, you don't need to install it. Uh, basically, almost all skills that are available in the market can be invoked uh, by the user. Mm. Okay, so without any user... So basically, I just pronounce or I just talk to my device, and then the device sends this to the market, and the market will then pick one skill that fits. Uh, yeah, uh, it will send it to the uh, West Assistant, Assistant Cloud. The cloud will uh, uh, conduct a longest prefix matching to decide which scale uh, will be invoked. So the scale server will then uh, take over the interaction with the users. Mm -hmm. After that, uh, all the West command will be sent to the scale servers. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then there were quite a few differences between Google and uh, Alexa. Do you have any explanation why the differences were so high? Uh, you mean the... Uh, the success rate. Uh, we're actually not sure. We use the same re uh, recordings, I mean, from uh, text-to-speech uh, services and also human subjects. One thing to note is the human subjects, uh, mo almost all the human subjects are native speakers. So uh, I don't want to comment on why their performance is different, but uh, yeah, that's it. They just show different uh, uh, recognition error rate. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Let's thank the speaker again.